we're going to uh, start to um, go into some grade 10 problems so hopefully uh, you'll be uh, able to um, review that as well uh, in this video um, within a, a 10 minute window or so uh, sort of at least under 15 minutes so we only have time to go over only part of the grade 10 program we're going to have to extend this series into a fourth video so uh, it looks as though we're just sort of planning this as we go along and um, these slide uh, this slide presentation was made uh, a fairly a fair amount of time ago so um, at any rate um, these terms haven't gone out of date because they're still in the curriculum uh, document uh, stuff you have to know from grade 10 okay so to balance the chemical equation you place a blank before the chemical formula for one or more substances what would that be that's called a coefficient now I hope you remember pause the video before you uh, go on to the answer maybe write maybe bring some bring a notebook with you write your answers in your notebook or write your answers on a sheet of paper and sort of pause the video and restart it again and pause it again and restart it again so that you can uh, play along and um, see how many of these answers you get right uh, if you don't well then those are the areas you would have to study on your own and you're responsible uh, you are responsible for uh, making up for your weaknesses in in uh, these earlier grades so a compound that is formed from a metal and a non-metal is likely a a salt okay that's a salt two atoms can join together by sharing an electrons in a okay that's a chemical bond the substances that are formed during a chemical reaction are called the okay those are products a blank forms as a result of the loss or gain of electrons that's an ion the starting material in a chemical reaction are called the starting material in a chemical reaction those are called the reactants a group of atoms that have an overall charge is known as a it's an ion polyatomic ion actually because it's a group of atoms okay we're going to name a bunch of formulas and you give me the formula for the compound sodium sulfide uh, sorry about that I was a little too quick on the draw that's Na2S I'll promise to be a little slower for the next ones aluminum bromide okay carbon tetrachloride okay sulfur trioxide okay Cal calcium carbonate Phosphorus pentachloride. Ammonium phosphate. Aluminum sulfate. Copper to nitrate. Gold 3 fluoride. Now, um, I'm going to go over some compounds, and you could also name them as well, but uh, we're just going to determine if these compounds are ionic or molecular. And you're supposed to use what you know about whether the, me where the, whether the atoms uh, involved in the bond are either metal or nonmetal. Cl2O. Okay, that's molecular. 
Li2O, lithium oxide, it's molecular, it's ionic, sorry. K3PO4, potassium phosphate, ionic. Iron 2 hydroxide, ionic. Yeah, that one came a little too quickly. That's tin 4 chloride. That's iron 3 iodide. Okay. That's aluminum sulfate. And that's carbon dioxide. All right. Notice that every time I named a compound, um, well, for one thing, uh, what these all have in common is whenever I named a molecular compound, uh, what made it molecular was that you had a non-metal bonded to a non-metal. Where you had a metal bonded to a non-metal, they were normally ionic. And um, that usually is uh, quite consistent. Notice also that the ionic compounds where a metal is bonded to a non-metal are given names like, for example, this one here is called potassium phosphate. Potassium phosphate and not tripotassium phosphate. Notice we didn't say tripotassium phosphate, we just said potassium phosphate. And over here we um, didn't say iron dihydroxide but instead we said iron 2 hydroxide. Um, without counting the OHs. But whenever we got to, say, CO2 or Cl2O, well, Cl2O was dichloro, uh, di, di, dichloro-oxide, uh, or oxygen dichloride, if you like, and CO2 was called um, carbon dioxide. And that's because you have a non-metal bonded to a non-metal, and that affects the naming. Not only does it affect the naming, it also affects whether the compound is ionic or molecular. Balance each chemical equation. I'll simply just present the chemical equations. You try to balance them, pause the video, and then in a few seconds I will present the balanced equation.